Welcome to Setting the Pace. Now, today we are in Churchill Town Centre in Kaptagat and we are here to meet a legend. A legend who is still running and who only holds himself up to a class of three other top athletes and that's Haile Gebre Selassie and Paul Tergat. We will be visiting uh, the Global Sports Village where he trains and it's one of the ones that host the top male athletes in Kenya. I want to introduce our guest on setting the pace today and uh, that's Elliot Kipchoge who's a 2015 um, London Marathon winner as well as a Berlin Marathon winner. He's won so much and uh, uh, Elliot I think it's only fair that you tell people about yourself and some of your accolades around, uh, along the way. Currently I'm a marathoner and I participated in track for, for, for 10 years and in marathon for two years. I'm a current winner for London Marathon 2015 and also three weeks ago, uh, I, I won a Berlin Marathon. Well, let's tell us about your early years. It starts from uh, 2003 when I conquered the world during my junior level in eight kilometers uh, in Lausanne World Cross Country. And three months later, I won a uh, World Championships 5,000 meters. Well, let, let's talk about your life on track. I can say actually it was smooth and I enjoyed it. I am among those who are lucky to to run sub 13 minutes and sub 27 in, 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 in 10,000 meters for 10 years. Looking at those 10 years that you've just mentioned, uh, what are some of the highlights for you? Highlights in those 10 years is a uh, world championship to, to uh, 2003 when I won uh, a global event. When you look at uh, track to road, um, what brings that decision to make that shift? It's the plan I was having in my mind with, my, with the management and the coaching system. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's not that uh, I failed to perform so that I make a transition. We see some athletes who don't make that transition. So um, at what point should I make a transition? Nowadays people are going directly to the marathon. But still I can still uh, actually uh, ask them to run from the cross country, go to the track, for some time, when you are at a high level, to handle tension is actually a, a, a big issue. So if, if you learn from the track, so making transition will be really easy. You've had the same coach from when you are um, on the road. Has that helped you be the person that you are today? Having one person who understands you for those uh, 13 years. I think that's, uh, it's, it's good to actually uh, uh, know each other. It's good that a uh, coach can know you more than, than anybody else. And, that, 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 that's what uh, contributes more to, to my success. Well, we will be talking more with uh, Elliot, but for now, uh, we watch a highlight also about another a top athlete, and then we will take a break. When you come back, we'll hear more from Elliot. <laughs> I started training when I was in school. I was running uh, 400, half a mile and one mile. I was also a football player. I left school in 1957 and then I joined police training college in Kiganjo. When I finished my training, I was sent to general service unit. I've been working as a policeman from 1957 until 1973. Let's go. I represent Kenya first in 1959 which I went to United Arab Emirates and Israel. I qualified for 60 Olympic, but the white people say, no, I'm still young. In 1962, I qualified for the Commonwealth Games in part Western Australia, of which I finished fourth in uh, 1500 meters. So in 1964, I was in Tokyo. I finished also fourth in 1500 meters and uh, 5,000 meters. In 1965, we had all Africa Games in Congo Brazzaville. I came home, the two goal, a goal in 1500 and a goal in 5000 meters. The same year, 1965, I broke two world records, 3000 meters and 5000 meters. 1966, the Commonwealth Games in Kingston, Jamaica. I came home with a, a goal in three mile, a goal in one mile. And I broke under four minute mile, the first African to run under four minute mile. Kano of Kenya, and we're not gonna have the door that we had 1968, we had Olympic in Mexico. I qualified for all, all the events, 1,500 meters, 5,000 and 10,000 meters. I had a pain, I had a gold storm, but I say as captain of the team, I have to run the event. The traffic was heavy, so I jumped out of the bus and ran all the way to the stadium. And uh, I reported 
when I reached there, they were scoring fast goal. In 1500 meters, I ran my event the way I planned. And I won a gold medal and left my colleague 20 meters behind. And was, that was an, the Olympic record. I did run 5,000, I came up with silver. 10,000, I collapsed. Lucky enough, in 10,000 meters, Naftali Tim won a gold. 1972, a Munich Olympic, and win a gold in uh, 3,000 meters civil. I won the silver in um, 1,500 meters. Also was a, an Olympic record in the 3,000 meters civil. I've had a lot of challenges. Those days, black people, we were not recognized as a good athlete. There were a lot of boycott. We boycott the games in Moscow. We boycott the games in um, Canada. In other countries, I was locked in, in Australia, and I was able to run my event and win. I was also threatened to be killed by the Scottish. Those who had farm here, we got independent, they left, they were not happy. So they say they are going to shoot me. I was supposed to run at uh, 3.30, but the program was changed. I did run at uh, 1.30. The three guys rang and said, listen, you made these people change the program, but next event, we are not going to miss you. And the policemen, the Scotland Yard, went around searching the houses next, so next to the stadium, and they got three people with three telescopic and they were arrested, and they didn't tell me. So uh, myself, I said, I don't want to win this event. Let the Scottish win. My life is very <laughs> more important. I won a bronze. I didn't want to win the gold or silver. They were also another event which was very interesting. They were a memorial of Martin Luther King. When I was warming up, somebody came in to me and said, what are you doing here, monkey? I can blow your head. And they put a can here. I said, no. Uh, in my country, I'm not a monkey, I'm a human being. He said, monkey, I will blow your head. Get out of this place. So I was able to go out and hide myself. When the event was called, I went to the field, removed my clothes near where the starting is, and then ran, finished, took my clothes and ran straight away to the hotel. My manager, which was um, some shambing buddy, was the one who brought the, the prize for me. In sports, the youth of the world, they are not involved with politics. The sports is a unity to unite the youth of the world. After the athletics, I decided uh, I want to be part and part of the sports. So I went for training coach, coaching in uh, UK and also in the US. So I was a coach for Kenya team. I had a club here called 64 Anas Club, which I had a lot of good athletes. I also became a member of uh, Athletic Kenya and also a member of the, the National Olympic Committee. I was also a member of the International Athlete Commission. We started in 1981. When I became an IOC member, I became the president of the National Olympic Committee and also a member of the Commonwealth Games Federation. The continent of Africa has a lot. This country, Kenya, has a lot to be done. We start to have infrastructure. Those infrastructure from the school can be able we can be able to generate a lot of talent in the country. The International Olympic, they gave us equipment worth 15 million to be able to put back to the youth in the villages. But we go to other villages, and they don't have anything. No playing ground. My foundation, Keep Kenya Foundation, is uh, mainly on education. We have taken care of a lot of children, and those are often kids. Mainly is education. Education is a key thing. When you have knowledge, you can be able to fit anywhere in our society. We also give a scholarship to our athletes. Take, for example, Aspel. I brought him here. He was staying with me here in this house. And uh, we built up up to where he is. Came boy. I brought him immediately after leaving high school. I pass all the experience, what I ha whatever I have, to the youth. In Bristol, we had built up a, a good relationship of developing our athletes. At the end of it, they gave me an honor, honorary doctor Choke Keno from Bristol University. We also have a, 
running track in Bristol, named after Kipchoge Keino. Why can we, as our universities, to be given you one or two athletes scholarship? We want the university to be developing sports. 2012, we didn't take the team early to go to London, and the weather in London was bad. They arrived a day, the following day they are running, and they were not used to the weather. 2016, our team, we are going to prepare them well. I think we are going to be performing better than what we did in Beijing. Welcome back. You're watching Setting the Pace on Zuku Sports. And today uh, we are graced by the presence of Eliud Kipchoge. Remember, you can be able to get in touch uh, with us using the social media sites on your screen. Um, Eliud, 2002 to 2012, before you went into the marathon, you are on the track. Who was your biggest rival and why? Um, my biggest rival was Kanana Safekela. Positive uh, rival. Um, the reason is. Uh, I beat him once in 2003, and all other is really giving me headache all the time. Do you ever talk to Kenanisa? I'm in connection with him, you know, it's a world of social media. To talk to him through Facebook, through Twitter, yes. I follow him in Google+. Plus. How was it for you as an athlete moving from track to the road? It's hard to, to make uh, from uh, small training to the bigger training. You know, in, in track program is actually short but intensive. But it marathon is it's really long, tiresome and, and, and cumbersome. When, when you talk about it being long in the marathon, um, what exactly do you mean? Uh, I mean in long runs in, in track we normally go one hour. But in marathon we normally go about up to two hours, 40 minutes. Two hours, 50 minutes, even three hours. That's going to up to 42 kilometers in training. And also in track we normally cover over 15 kilometers just in track. Well, uh, take us through your first race. How was it for you as an experience? Um, my first uh, actually was in Ampak and to say the truth is that uh, I, was, I was really learning and you know when you are, you are preparing for marathon you hear many the ideologies that when you reach 30 kilometers, 35 kilometers, 38 kilometers where everybody is dying. So in fact uh, my mind was really ready to, 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 to expect uh, the negative side after 38 kilometers. But, uh, I, I I didn't get that. And did you win the race? You haven't told us what happened in oh, Hamburg. Yes. Uh, I win the race with a with with a personal pace at that time, and with a course record in Hamburg up to now. Did you win any other marathon that year? That year I, I was second in Berlin, but 2014 I went to marathon that's in Rotterdam in April and Chicago in October, and this year I have won London, and. And Berlin. Let's talk about um, Berlin this year and Belgrade. Uh, two races where I really went through a, a lot of hurdles and you can actually tell us what happened. In Belgrade, uh, somebody stepped on me and the shoe was out. Then I started to hear it and catch up with the pace and go on. At what, at what kilometre did uh, the shoe come off? Uh, you know, it, it was a road race and it was, a, I think, nine kilometres uh, race. So I think about, at, at, at the beginning of the race, but I made it to, to wear it again and catch up with the group. Did you win that race? Mm, I was second. I was beaten just by a... <laughs> 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 what happened in Berlin? First year I was going there for the, for the win. Secondly, I was going there, there for my personal best. And that is I was going there for my for fastest time. I can call it the fastest time. But uh, two of them uh, became reality. One of them fall out. That's running faster time. But I got my PP and, and the winning. And you also had another shoe incident. So uh, do you want to share about that yes, shoe incident again? Uh, immediately after 800 meters, my insoles plopped out. And I talked to some of my, my, some of the colleagues that it's, it's really hot now. And I start to think about the winning and finishing the race. You were able to achieve that winning? At long last year I win and I got my personal best with all those problems. But it, I, I think it's, uh, those are challenges in sport. I also know that uh, you also went through a, a painful thing during that uh, incident. My foot uh, was really painful. 
my muscles are really painful. You know, a soul is a shoe. What matter of a shoe is a, is a soul. But my my big finger actually was out, and it it always happens when you run a marathon. How many marathons is, is one supposed to run safely in a year? Recommended ones are two. That's if you want to run in a high level of running under 206. Two is enough. When you generally look at the marathon, who are some of the legendary names that you look up to yourself? Uh, in marathon, actually, I normally see Haile Kepira Salazi. You actually met uh, his name in track and make a big transition to, 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 to break a world record in marathon. Also, Paul Tracker to break a world record in marathon after making a big transition in, in, in track. From what he's just said, he can only hold himself up to Haile Gebre Selassie and Paul Tergat, both very big names. We watch a feature and then after that we will have a break. When we come back, we will hear more from Elid. Basically, I was a sprinter when I was coming up and I loved anything that has speed. Around 2009, I decided to do uh, an experiment. It was biomechanics, and I thought we, we were a little bit behind in that. It was an experiment that made me become a coach after that. Tegatara is my coach. He used to run. He was basically being beaten day in, day out. So he decided one day to sit down and watch all races, all meetings, and see what these guys usually do so that he can go and do even him so that he can improve his times. That's how he developed his, his coaching. It's not that we don't have sprinters. The problem is we don't have good coaching. And most of the coaches lack the science know-how. The science part of it mostly is about the force that is applied, the angle that you use, and how to train the right muscles. The, the force is the physics, the muscles is the biology, and chemistry is what you need in recovery, in making you run faster. First twitch muscles are divided into two. 2B two is, is a part of the first twitch muscles that gets exhausted very fast. So that's why you find that very good sprinters don't train very hard because their muscles get fatigued very fast. Then you have 2A, its threshold for workload is a little bit higher, so they're able to train harder but not as fast as 2B. I have like six very good sprinters. Karo Iganjo, uh, she's a hurdler. She was unbeaten in the last three years, but she lost for the first time this year. Uh, we have Marco Tieno, he's the next big thing. We have Gilbert Otieno. We have Steven Barraza. I have Peter Moai. We have Vera Rore. Four of them were in Congo for all African games. The most talented athletes have bad attitude. I'm looking for good talent and with good attitude, I want to develop them. I want to create a brand of Kenyan sprinting. So the, the athlete must be teachable. The talent is there. It's only that we are not able to identify these talents. And if we can identify them, then we develop them to become our class, have a good project that is funded well, or have having partners with us. It's going to be wonderful. The main challenge in even our sprinters is they do not believe they can make it. We are trying to change the mentality first, then we incorporate the, our training regimes that, that is more advanced, that can match the world-class sprinters, then after that we'll develop them slowly, like in three or four years they'll be world class. We want to have at least four, four sprinters in Olympics for exposure, at least make them reach the semis. 2020, we want to compete with the Americans and the Jamaicans. The Federation doesn't do much to support even the long distance. We have like to develop ourselves, then when you get to the national team, that's when the Federation takes care of you. Before then, they don't. It has been a long time since we had someone in Olympics doing 100 meters. I have a systematic program that I'm, I'm developing for Rio. I want to delay and have a very good foundation for strength and that will be able to sustain us for the second part of the season. We need to be careful, very careful with the injuries. 
So we, we have a doctor, we have a physio, and then I have a nutritionist. Everything okay. is going to fall into place if we remain injury free. Most of the time I work with the young guys because I want to develop them. Most of them are not employed. We don't have a professional contract with them, are athletes to pay me. If we can have companies who can work with us or partnership with us, we can market them in our jerseys. We can work in partnership that is mutual, that benefits everyone. For sprinters, uh, they need to, be, to get exposed. If we can get our federation helping us in getting races outside, and if we can have people be able to get or hit the qualifying mark for Rio as early as March, then we can relax and try to think about hits and semis in, in Rio, rather than thinking about qualifying in the nationals or in the trials. Welcome back. You're watching Setting the Pace on Zuku Sports. Uh, now, uh, Elliot, do you think Kenyans know much about athletics at the moment? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but I think with the presence of the internet everywhere, Kenyans actually uh, know about athletics. Well, the presence of uh, the internet is helping Kenyans know a lot about athletics. Let's find out whether you actually do know much in this week's trivia. Of the blocks is when you are uh, set position and you wait for the gun. You react after the gun goes off. You react to it. The sprints is coming up. According to me, short races they have more people compared to those people in long races. Even you can go up to 100 meters if you can take uh, talent from all all over the country. Some are running to keep fit. Some are running to earn and not compared to the other years when people were running out of passion. During the past it was among the best but it is like it's diminishing. Elliot, now uh, as we wind up the, the show, I want us now to talk about your legacy so far in athletics and what you want to leave behind. Uh, I want actually to leave uh, PI in a clean spot. I want to leave uh, a good name whereby it can actually being a role model to the younger generation or the, those who are unborn in future. When you talk about a clean sport, we have had so many incidents of doping that are coming up. What's your take on doping? Uh, doping actually is a, is a bad scenario, but all in all I can say doping is unfortunate and if you are really a professional athlete and you respect sport, then you don't need to top. I'm guessing there's still something that is still keeping you in athletics. Actually, in my in my neck, I'm lacking a Olympic gold. Yes, that's what I'm looking forward for. What will you be going for in terms of discipline in uh, the Olympics? Obviously, I'm going for marathon. Just look at the marathon. Um, one of the things that has come out is the fact that uh, uh, we've had incidents like in these years uh, World Championships where people are talking about burnouts for a marathoner. So, um, in between the championship. How far should one run in a, in a major marathon? The important thing is the mind. If your mind actually is upright, then the body will be upright. So all in all, when you get a, a preparation of three months after, after a major marathon, then that's enough. Just look at yourself. You've won uh, two marathons every year since last year. So what's your strategy? My strategy is uh, simple. It's uh, good preparation. Yes and being actually disciplined, self, I mean self-discipline. I will also have another segment in our show called Personal Best and here we get to know uh, new things about different athletes. So for you, um, in 2003, you were able to uh, win um, a junior gold and a senior uh, gold medal. How did it make you feel when you achieved that? I feel really extra happy, more than I expect and I can say I enjoyed the uh, athletics uh, that year. 2003 was a great year for Elid uh, Kipchoge. Here's something else that we didn't know about the star athlete. My favorite food is Ugali Managu. My favorite car is Audi. Top speed. My favorite TV show 
locally, Inspector Moa, 2012. That's, that's the time that I wore my first spike. My first kiss was when, uh, after high school, yeah, 2009. I took my first girl out for a walk. My favorite type of shoe is sneakers. My best Kenyan destination is Malindi. My best international des destination would be Jamaica. My best favorite movie, Fast and Furious. In Fast and Furious, my favorite actor is Vin Diesel. So cool, humbled. He got to get what he wants. My favorite international musician is Vibes Carter. The most expensive thing that I own is my son, Regan. Nothing. Everything that I own is expensive. Yeah. Well, uh, Elliot, we have to say a big thank you for allowing us to um, talk to you today. Thank you. And uh, we are hoping that uh, you were able to get that gold medal finally in 2016. I hope so. Uh, that was uh, Eliud Kipchoge, uh, who's the 2014 uh, Hamburg and Rotterdam Marathon winner, as well as the 2015 uh, Berlin and London Marathon champion. From me, Samim Wright has been a great show. See you again next week. But just before we go, here are our pro tips for this week. For a long distance runner, after the race, you have to keep your body relaxed and cool. Don't run to food. You will have stomach problems. So settle up the body and eat the food after 30 to 1 hour.